You're listening to 99.1 CGM FM, broadcasting in Windsor and Detroit and around the world at www.cjam.ca. We provide music and information programming not offered by the mainstream commercial media in the Windsor, Detroit area. 99.1 CGM FM, redefining radio in Windsor and Detroit. The following is a rebroadcast of an interview with Tony Mills originally aired on the Signals of Intuition February 6, 2011. for melodic heavy metal. Playing it heavier. Louder. Raunchy. Faster. 99.1 G-J-A-M This is the signals of intuition. Ninety nine point one C Jam FM, you're listening to the Signals of Intuition, two hours of melodic hard rock and heavy metal coming your way tonight. And tonight we got a very special show, as you might have guessed by the tune there that was brand new TNT. On the line right now, we have Mr. Tony Mills of TNT, Shy, Siam, Serpentine, State of Rock. The list goes on and on. So without further ado, uh, Tony, you there, man? Hello. Hey, Tony, how's it going, man? How are you doing? Doing good. So you've been in the middle of uh, interview hell right now. It's um yeah it's been quite um it's been quite busy and um it's like video organising video production and as well as some gigs and all the bloody rest of it. But I've got to get the bulk of the press done in the first few weeks of the year because of, because of the release dates and stuff. So I ended up moving to bloody Norway and um so now I live in Oslo and um I've been doing it all from here so. Oh, so are you living there full time? You're not living in England anymore. No, I've left England now. Oh, okay. <laughs> that sounds like a very knowing, a knowing. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I had a big fallout with me bloody wife, so we split up. Oh, so, oh sorry to hear, man. But mm, rock and roll. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, well, you want to get uh, everything underway? Yeah, crack on. Okay. Uh, so can you begin by telling our listeners a little bit about who you are and who you've played with over the years? Okay. Hi, I'm Tony Mills from TNT in Norway, and um, I've been singing and writing songs and performing on stage since probably around about 1978, um, which is obviously older than most of you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I started off with uh, some rock bands in England, uh, but ended up singing with a band called Shy, which I spent about eight years on the road with, uh, up until uh, 1990. And then uh, we went our separate ways because of wanting to do different things, different sorts of music and stuff. Uh, so I put a much heavier band together called Siam, which I had a lot of fun with for about uh, four or five years. And then the interest in the band was fastly overtaken by the grunge period. Um, so we had to let that one go. Um, because that that market killed our, our side of the market completely. Yeah. Um, so when the millennium, I, did, I just did session work really up until the millennium after that, and then um, uh, I did. I went back and did two more albums with Shy, which was all very tickety boo, um, and then some solo work, and then I sang for the Sweet for a while, which was a disaster, and uh, that, uh... only on their Danish, only on their Danish tour that was. Oh, okay. Um, but personalities uh, clashed too stiffly there, so it was never going to work. But it was a really short amount of time then before I got the phone call for TNT in 2006, and um, I've been working in Scandinavia ever since. <laughs> so it's fantastic. So now you guys have a brand new record. What 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 are you guys officially calling it? Because there's two names. Yeah, well, there's two titles because of two different market reasons, really. And um, the, the album in England and. Uh, in uh, Europe is called A Farewell to Arms um, and as far as I'm aware for the rest of the world it's called Engine. There was various reasons for this, uh, all practical ones actually, Not it wasn't just to try and get twice as much money out of a fan to <laughs> buy two different copies. It, it was nothing to do with that. It was um, 
I wasn't particularly well during the summer and um, I had a heart problem and um, we probably thought for a while that this would be the last TNT album. So um, Ronnie Lateco went away and called it a farewell to arms, uh, which uh, sort of seemed appropriate at the time. But some of the markets didn't like the title of the album. They didn't think it was explosive enough or mechanical enough for TNT. So they asked us to rename the album for separate markets, which we did. Um, so we called the engine for some of the other markets and did different promo things for it and stuff like that. Um, and um, it was a bit strange actually because the engine is, uh, I think, the opening track on the album, and um, it says a lot about me and the way can you hear my heart beating and can you hear my motor running and all this sort of shit, you know. Yeah. And, uh, so it's he was sort of got his tongue in his cheek when he when he named it for the other territories that but I, I understood why and now it's a bit bloody late anyway so it's got two different titles and um, maybe we'll do two different videos I, I'm not sure at the moment but that's the week after next anyway so so uh, so the the reaction uh, how's how's it been for the record so far from the press well I'm, I'm yeah I mean it's been fantastic and I mean everybody must always say that oh the press has been great you know and we we've got a great record and it's going to be a great tour and all this. but when you actually don't get any bad press uh, and everybody's jumping up and down saying thank god the band have returned to their roots then you 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 get the distinct feeling that you must have done something right you know yeah that's that's fantastic man so on this record you guys took a much heavier approach to the sound was this a conscious decision or did uh, that just sort of happen organically <laughs> As you guys started writing, there's actually little or no keyboards on the record at all this time. Um, maybe on the, perhaps on just on the ballad. I think there's some piano. Um, but um, Ronnie wrote all the music pretty much on his own, uh, with the help of an American guy on one song, a guy called Tony Caputo. And um, he spent about eight months in Spain and Norway, jumping backwards and forwards, um, working on guitar riffs and, and different passages and interludes and different ideas and things. And I didn't really hear that much until towards the beginning of the summer last year. Um, and I, saw, I got a couple of tracks down the email when I was at home in England. Mm-hmm. And um, I thought, yeah. And he'd already got a couple of vocal ideas, although he hadn't really written that much in the way of lyrics or melodies or anything. Uh, and I thought, hmm, she's a bit bloody lightweight, actually. I'm not sure. Um, but it was, it, was the, it was a situation that I was monitoring the tracks in at home it just didn't come across that powerful and uh, when i got to oslo it knocked my head off so um i sat in front of the the monitors in the studio in oslo and i I sat through all 10 tracks and i thought i can't fault any of them at all i think they're all great so then we he'd spent about eight months working on it and uh, i put the pen to paper and i think we'd finished the album in about three weeks oh wow so um so it was so easy to be honest because the music was so good Mm -hmm. that you couldn't really get it wrong you know if you got it wrong then you're a bloody clown (laughs) so perhaps you know a different singer a a different writer would have come up with different approaches and different lyrics obviously but what happened worked and um, when I'm looking at the smile on the face of the guy that wrote the music then I know that um, we did the right thing and he's a very happy bunny with this record, so we're looking forward to spending quite a long time on the road with him, perhaps even two years. Wow. Oh, well, Tony, we're going to go to a quick commercial break right now. Can I get you to pick a couple of uh, TNT tunes from the new record? Oh, without a doubt. Um, Refugee is my favourite track, mainly because of the guitar chords under the chorus that I really like, because, it, because they gave me the availability of a really nice chorus melody, so it's really stuck with me. Um, the other one? Yeah, uh, I'd probably choose "Take It Like a Man, Woman," which is <laughs> just about as close to Judas Priest as we're going to get. And uh, we're not, we're not going to do it live, oddly enough, but uh, because it's such a, it's such a, a problematic track live, there's too much involved. Yeah. Um, but for me, it's a real high point on the record, and it brings out Ronnie's playing, and it's a very straightforward vocal, but it's got a lot of balls, and it's it's very up tempo and very indicative of of the way TNT are, TNT are these days. So those two tracks I would choose straight away. You got uh, one one more you can think of from that record? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I'd probably pick Engine, actually, because it starts off as heavy as, as heavy gets, and then it turns into this bizarre, bouncy blues thing. But it, it's gone down so well in Europe that, uh, well, I've, I mean, uh, people love it. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I can't... 
That must that, that must be right, I guess. Yeah, totally. All right, well, here's TNT with Engine, and we'll be back with more Tony Mills after this. Crank it up. 99.1 CGM FM, redefining radio in Windsor and Detroit. There's TNT, three in a row from them. That was Refugee. Take it like a man, woman, and engine. Tonight on the phone, we got a very special guest, Mr. Tony Mills, the singer of that band. Uh, they've got a new record out called Farewell to Arms or Engine, depending on which part of the world you live in. Uh, Tony, you got to tell me, uh, usually you guys tour you know, Scandinavia and Sweden and Norway and all that. Uh, do you have any plans to tour outside of there, like the rest of Europe, maybe Asia or you know, the States or anything like that? Well, I've said this twice before on the previous two records that that is the definite intention. Now, we're already out in Sweden with um, Udo Dirk Schneider and um, Accept. And, um, well, and we're booked to play in Greece and we've got other gigs in Sweden and we've got quite a lot to do in Norway to start with. And the intention is to head out into mainland Europe as soon as we've got these shows done. Now, we've just signed a South American deal and um, the album's out in Japan and it seems to be going down pretty well there. So the possibilities are enormous considering, um, uh, sorry, compared to what they were on the previous two albums. So my fingers and my toes and my balls are all crossed. (laughs) (laughs) Which is most uncomfortable to say the least. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Well, hopefully you guys do make it over here. Um, well, I hope so too. It's been 20 years since I've toured the states, and I loved it. And I've not, no, I've never had the opportunity to go back. It's always been Europe. That was so, that was last with uh, Shia, I would presume, eh? That's right. Yeah, it was the last tour I did in America with that band. With, with it was with Shia. Yeah, I mean it was a long one as well. I think it was about nine months or something. Who who are you guys with? Um, well, Badlands before Ray died. Um, uh, enough's enough. Um. A band called the Sleazebees. Oh, yeah. I, yep. I think they came from Holland. And if I ever meet those guys again, I'm going to give them a serious kicking because they left me with the hotel bill from hell. Oh. Uh, <laughs> my television went out the window and everything. Thank you, boys. <laughs> I shan't forget that one. Um, and, um, uh, yeah, I think it was mainly that. And, and uh, another band from Scotland called Gun as well. Oh, okay, cool. So we did quite a lot of shows with those guys. And when um, I was on form... For, for quite a long time and uh, when the other singers were having bad nights and they couldn't do the concerts because of the voice was shot or whatever then we would just do them on our own right from San Francisco back down to Florida so it was quite a quite a long period of time then uh, around about um, the back end of the 80s into the into the 90s oh wow and that that led into uh the recording of uh oh god what was the name of that record 1990 cruiser oh or was it a shy album you the, the shy one um Finished business. Un- no unfinished business. Well, yeah, there was that one, but because you guys did excess all areas and then you toured and then did when? No, we did we did excess all areas in nineteen eighty seven, um, but that was we spent pretty much all the time in Los Angeles co-writing it with different people first. Oh, okay. Before we actually went back to Holland and recorded it there, uh, and then we toured for quite a long time, but then we did another album with MCA called Misspent Youth. Which was oh, a, okay, that's that's the name of the one I was thinking of. Which was a bloody calamity, and $125,000 down the pan, just because we none of us got on very well. Um, but th- that was the album that we did the majority of the touring in America for, and, and it was a great album live, it just never worked on record, Yeah, because it just, production was very bad, And uh, but live, it always sounded great, so, you know, no wonder we stayed there nine months. And uh, right, right now, are you still officially a member of Shy? What's what's all? No, no, no. Um, <clears throat> what happened last year was that um, I mean, Shy. When I left Shy and joined TNT in two thousand and six, they decided to carry on and write another record, which I thought was great. They got another singer, which was great, called Lee Small. He sang for the Phenomena Project. <clears throat> nice guy, and um, he recorded and wrote all the vocals on the album. And uh, I mean, I was permanently abroad anyway, so I, did, I didn't know, really know what was going on that closely. But um, then they did a couple of gigs, and then they decided that he wasn't the right guy after he'd recorded the album and written it, but they hadn't mixed it yet. So that was about two, two, two and a half years ago, something like that. So they got to that point, and then um, I got a phone call and said, "Can you come?" 
to England and rewrite the whole Shy album and record it all. So I thought, well, I've got to go back to England for a few months. Um, so um, I, I went back to England and uh, rewrote the album. I was about halfway through it. And um, I was really pleased with the songs. And I, and I saw Steve Harris, the guitarist, who's got cancer of the brain now, unfortunately. Oh, no. And um, he's had it for a long time. So um, I was about halfway through. I sent all the songs away to various record companies to see what the contract offers were. <clears throat> and uh, I came back with a couple of contracts and the money to do the album and everything else. And then there was a big bloody argument about who should have the money and why and what for and everything else. So I thought, no, 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 this is completely wrong. Um, so I gave them the record contracts and um, I said, here are the contracts, here is the money. You obviously don't want me to do it. So uh, I'll just let them have everything. And I went back to Norway and sadly... Um, when I was, when the record companies found out that I wasn't going to be any fur, involved any further, they 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 withdrew the offers, so they didn't have a record deal anymore. Mm. Um, and then they, what they did was they they brought back in all the songs that Lee Small had written and recorded, and now they're mixing that, and it's took them five years now, and uh, and they and it's not coming out probably until the middle of next year. Mm. Uh, sorry, middle of this middle of this year. But, you know, I mean, whatever they want to do, Steve's extremely ill. He has been for two years. He, I don't think he'll ever get on the stage again. So the band will never play live anyway. Um, and there was very little I could do about that. Yeah, oh, for sure. Uh, it's, it's all very sad, you know, but um, we know we've been in the business a long time and it's just very unfortunate that he became ill so young. Um I really don't know what his prognosis is, but he's a fantastic guitarist. He's one of the best guitarists in the world. Oh, yeah. Um, and he can certainly write songs. So I'm, I'm sad that the last album doesn't include me. Um, but by the same token, I, I can't really afford to sit down and do nothing in the hope that something will happen, which is why I left the band in the first place. And T&T have barely been off the road in five years. Wow. And this is the third album we've recorded. So I made the right decision. Um... It's very different because I don't speak Norwegian, so I'm with a lot of people that are talking all sorts of shit, and I don't know what they're on about. <laughs> but um, I just sort of tend to sort of curl up in the corner with a can of beer and take no notice, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, I hope something comes from the final Shy record. I really do hope that, um, but it won't be including me. Yeah. So. So, Tony, we've got to take another break right now. Can you think of two songs from Shy that you'd like to hear uh, throughout the entire discography? It could be anything your choice. Uh, I don't know what you've got. I've got, um, I think, about every record. Have you got a track called Don't Want to Lose Your Love? Uh, I, th I think it's the last song on Accessible Areas on the import. Oh, okay, yep, yeah, yeah, I've got that one. Have you got, have you got that? Because yep. I think that's the best song the band ever recorded. Um... Probably break down the walls, okay. which would sort of make sense, really. Um, and then if you skipped over to, have you got unfinished business? Yeah, yeah, I've got that one. Well, if you play skydiving off that one, okay, that would be pretty indicative of what I'd want to say about that band, really. Okay, well, let's fire the first one off right here. This is break down the walls from Shy, only here on 99.1 CGM FM, and we'll be back with more Tony Mills. 99.1 CJAM FM, they're shy with skydiving. Uh, three in a row, actually, from shy. Before that, we had Don't Want to Lose Your Love and Break Down the Walls. On the phone right now is Mr. Tony Mills, the singer of shy, TNT, uh, State of Rock, Serpentine, Siam, the list goes on and on. Uh, Tony, let's go back to our earlier topic, uh, touring and TNT. Can you drop any hints about uh, what from the new record is going to make it into the, the upcoming tour? Yeah, sure. I've got the set list in front of me here somewhere, actually. Um, the, the, the show is predominantly... It's, it's, um, predominantly the right word, yeah, I suppose it is. It's, um, we don't leave any of the classic tracks out. Um, there are, in this show... Well, I can read the track list to you if you want me to. Cool, yeah. It starts off with a new track, Engine, uh, off the new album, and Barracuda off the new album. Then we play um, Harley Davidson, which... Um, we have to play because the Norwegian audience demand it. 
because it's like, the, the classic, right? Well, I just bloody love it. So if you lift, if you left it out, they'd be screaming their heads off. So we always put it in, and then it's uh, listen to your heart, which is a very old classic as well, and invisible noise, and we play refugee off the new album and ship in the night as well. Um, and then we jump back to Downhill Racer and Caught Between the Tigers. Oh, great. Then uh, uh, the short one off the album, A Farewell to Arms. And then My Religion, uh, which is I absolutely love. And 10,000 Lovers, and Intuition and Seven Seas. Great. Oh, that sounds like an awesome set list. It, well, it's a good mixture, you know. And um, it's been a, obviously, since I had a, a heart problem in August, uh, that was the last show I did. Um, and I remember it very clearly that the set list went down extremely well. But actually, I sat on the side, the side of the stage and laughed my ass off during the middle of the show because it was that enjoyable. Wow. Can we do that one again? <laughs> <laughs> that was great. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a, it's a very up show. We never play ballads live because we don't like to drop the tension. Yeah. So it's, the whole show is up from start to end. And uh, so is, are, are, you, uh, are you doing well now? Um, you've, you've obviously... Yes, I'm fine. I'm fine. You've reco- recovered well from your... Uh... Your hard episode? Yes, yes. I mean, it was, um, you know, I mean, uh, something you just did. I was so knackered and tired at the airport, and I, and I caught three flights and did a festival and then caught another flight back to catch another flight to do another festival, and that was it. At the airport, halfway down, I, I, I fell over, and I don't remember anymore. Mm. So, um, so they stuck a lot of needles in me and kicked me out of the hospital because I wanted the bed after a week. <laughs> <laughs> There was no space for rock singers. <laughs> but they, yeah, they fixed me up, and I'm all right now. Oh, that's great to hear. Um, is is it true there's a live DVD in the works from TNT? Uh, a live DVD? Um, we are currently, t- well, I mean, all this week we've been negotiating video terms, and um, certainly for the 30th anniversary, which is next year, uh, the intention is to do a lot of footage this year and bring it out with an album, a live album next year on the anniversary, yes. Oh, that'd be great. Um, okay, so in addition to uh, TNT, you also did, uh, I mean, you were involved in a bunch of other things this year, and one of the records I really enjoyed was Serpentine. How how did all that come about? Uh, well, I was actually with TNT in Oslo, um, uh, in between rehearsals and gigs, and I got a, just got an email to say, hi, we're a band from Wales, uh, with an American singer, but the singer's left. Can you help us out with a record? And I thought, well, maybe I can when I get some time off and I get back to England. So when I got back to England, I listened to the music, and it's very, it's very lightweight AOR record, um, but uh, it was very approachable. And I thought, well, it's not going to be that difficult to write this. So um, I guess it took me about four or five months or something like that. But it went down so well in Japan and Europe that um, they asked me to do the second one, although there's no way I could really um, entertain it live because I'm too busy with TNT. Yeah. And that's, I've, always kept, I've always kept that as my priority because they've sort of looked after me and I look after them and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, but I said that I was willing to write and record the second album, um, and, I've, and I'm actually on the ninth track at the moment, so... Um, it'll be finished within the month, and they start. They've already started recording the backing properly in a studio in Birmingham, and uh, I'll deliver the last track at some stage during this month. But um, we've sort of got together and worked together to find them another singer, which they've got now, which I'm very pleased about. Uh, called Matt Black, and he comes from England. Nice guy, good singer. Perfect for them, same age range. I was old enough to be the bloody father, you know. Oh, wow. So, oh, so there's young guys, eh? Oh, they're all 20 years old, yeah. They're fresh out of school. Oh, well, um, very accomplished musicians for that age. I'll give them that. Well, you know, I mean, they're, 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 they're learning as they carry on, and we all did. So it's nothing different for them. You yeah. Know? You just pick it up as you go. I learned so much off producers and other musicians when I was 20, 20 to 25 years old that I carried all those tricks with me and save a lot of time and just uh, you, you educate yourself as you grow up as a musician and the more people you work with the better oh yeah and but they, they really did need a singer that was their own age and tnt are all my age and we all gel together very well so i was never going to pass this up um to do something else this was always going to be my priority so yeah everything at the end of the day uh, everybody found their own level and uh everything slotted into place as it were so I don't feel guilty about walking away from Serpentine. In fact, they've asked me to write the third album next year, which I probably will. 
Oh, that's but fantastic. Matt will sing it. Yeah. So, you know, so they're set up pretty well, and they're playing in London with Houston and um, Vega, and, uh, you know, there's a big thing going on in the press about that at the moment, so they've already started off well. Oh, that's great. And uh, they should have a good future. Yeah. Okay, Tony, it's getting near the top of the hour, so we got to take a break. Um, mm. What do you say we do a couple of Serpentine tunes? You got any in mind? Uh, from the last record, of course. Yep. Okay, well, I haven't finished the new one yet, have I? So um, that would be... Uh, let's have a look. Here we go. Um, yeah, I think I'd probably choose um, Lonely Nights. Okay which was a song I wrote in 1990, and I forgot, and I found it on a cassette tape, and we dragged it out of the, out of the attic uh, last year and re-recorded the whole song, and, and it worked out great. Um, and the other one would probably be um, A Touch of Heaven, the opening track. Okay, let's take it away right here with the opening track from Serpentine. This is A Touch of Heaven, only here on 99.1 CGM FM, and we'll be back with more Tony Mills. I love for the future Nine nine point one C Jam FM. There's three in a row from Serpentine featuring singer extraordinaire Tony Mills. Uh, that was whatever heartache, lonely nights, and a touch of heaven. Right now we have Tony Mills still on the line, uh, the singer of Serpentine, Shy, TNT, Siam, State of Rock, and so many other bands. And uh, speaking of State of Rock, Tony, uh, I got to give my hats off. This year I gave my album of the year to State of Rock. Okay. A point of destiny that is. Thank you. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Well, I, I enjoyed it as well, and I'd never really heard of Robbie Bo Bell to any great extent. Um, but when Metal Heaven Records sent, sent me an email saying, can you please write an album with Robbie Bo Bell, I thought, well, send me some music then, let's have a listen to it. Uh, so he sent me the first couple of tracks, and they, they were bloody brilliant. And I thought, what a great sound, what a great guitarist. I've got to do this, I've got to do it. You know, so, um, and the album's finished in 12 weeks. And uh, and then I was in Nuremberg playing with the band for a while, and um, and then when that was finished, I went back to England. Uh, but though I was very pleased with the record, and so were the record company and the band as well. Um, so they're talking about a second album, um, actually, 15 months after the first one came out. So that's probably next week. <laughs> <laughs> well, I bloody hope not. <laughs> <laughs> are you are you going to be back for the next record? I don't, I don't know, to be honest. I, uh, I mean, if it interferes with TNT at all, then I'll turn it down. Yeah. Um, if it's just something to do in the spare time and do a couple of three gigs in Germany, which is where they're based, then, yeah, maybe I'll, I'll go for it and do it again. But if it gets in the way of what's happening with TNT, then I'll definitely turn it down. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, when, when we last talked, I think it was uh, last November or something, you, you were working on uh, an opera record. You still... Uh, Doing that, or <laughs> yes. what's 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 the scoop? Well, the scoop. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, the scoop is um, yeah. I mean, I aspire very much to finish that, and I haven't finished. In fact, I've probably not done any more since because everything else has got in the way. But I, I've got another seven songs to record on that record oh, wow. yet, and uh, but it it has to take uh, a back seat. Um, and again, whatever goes on with TNT will come before that. It's something I desperately want to do. It's so hard. Um, and that's the attraction of it because you think, oh, it just, it's anybody can go, <laughs> you know, but, but you want to have a go at it. It's a bastard. And um, you know, those three tracks, I, sp- I broke my heart trying to get them right uh, and remastering them and remastering them and, and this, that, and the other. And, and when I come to the end of the third one, everything else just got in the way, and I never got to the fourth track. But I've still got all the tracks, and I've still got everything set up on the desk. And so it's um, it's a definite, definite. But it's just a case of when, yeah, because <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I would absolutely love to finish it because it's such an achievement, because it's such hard work, and it's uh, when you actually finish it, it's like. My God, did I do that? Yeah. No, the computer did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's a great thing to do. It's a lot of fun as well because it's something so different um, that it's it's not just the same old bread and butter rock and roll. You know, it's uh, yeah, it's that radically different. That when you actually finish one, and it's, it's such a major achievement that it's, you sit there listening to it for about three weeks afterwards. You know, you, you're going to get uh, any guest singers or. 
you know any other opera singers anyone to join you or is that just going to be a solo Tony, Tony Mills thing I haven't even considered it I don't know yet there's a, there's a lot of great singers about and um there's a lot of great singers about and uh, in this day and age everybody's willing to you know pick up the pick pick up the towel and run with it and, and just to get involved with other artists I, I'm no dis, I'm not dissimilar really it's great to work with other people as long as it doesn't cost you a fortune in the process you know yeah um if you can if you can uh, you can do the job relatively quickly and uh, it wasn't that much of a pain in the ass then you can do it for nothing if it takes two bloody weeks, then you need to say, <clears throat> I need to give you an invoice, you know. Yeah. So nobody wants that because a lot of the music business now is about cooperation. It's not about profit. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you, and you do what you can and you keep your profile up and, uh, and you know, various opportunities come in. So uh, if I can involve other people um, and it's relatively straightforward and, uh, and they, they, they add to the project, then I would, I would bring them in without a pro- I'll bring Tony Arnell in. He's done some opera. Oh, cool. <laughs> but I think he might want me to pay him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Better have a dump truck of money show up to his front door. <laughs> yeah, well, I haven't asked him yet, so I'll see. Um, one, one thing I'm curious about, I was looking through my uh, CD collection the other day, and I, I had no idea that uh, you guys were a part of this. Do you remember uh, a band called The Shock from the 90s? Yes. How, how, how did like basically all of Siam wind up on uh, that record? Well, it's really simple. Um, Siam recorded their albums in a town called Coventry, mm-hmm. which is about sort of 25 miles southeast of Birmingham. Uh, we, we worked in a studio, which was underground, and we did um, our recordings down there for a long time. And The Shock um, were a local band to Coventry. They, they didn't come from very far away, and they were doing sessions in the same studio. But The Shock were quite big fans of Shy. So when Siam were recording in Coventry and they would come in and listen to some of the sessions and they were, they were the next band in to do an album there, um, it was like, do you guys all want to play on our record? And we said, well, why not? You know, we're here anyway, sure thing. Yeah. Put up the tracks and we'll... So I ended up doing the backing vocals and somebody else ended up doing something else and whatever. And uh, the drummer has become a, a very close friend of mine, Pete Newdeck, Um who's done a lot of work with um, uh, Steve Grimmett. Oh, okay, and, yeah. Uh, and now he plays with Eden, Eden's Curse and, uh, and various other things. In fact, he's just written a brilliant solo album as well. Oh, cool. Um, and, uh, you know, that was it, really. It was just um, a, a, bit, a bit of fun by association in the same studio at the same time. And then the singer went to prison for ages um, oh. for some... In- for some indiscriminate reason to do with pornography. I can't remember what it was. Mm. Um, and that was the end of the band, unfortunately. So nothing happened after that. It's kind of a shame. They, uh, I mean, the singer especially reminded me of uh, What's-His-Face from Firehouse. Yes. The whole band sounded like him, really. Yeah, well, Firehouse is a great band. I mean, I never made that connection myself. But then, which is typical of me, I don't listen to an enormous amount of music by new artists because I'm too bloody busy recording it. Oh, yeah, yeah, so for sure. So once, once you've recorded it, you don't spend forever listening to it, do you? Maybe I'll listen to the album once or twice ever, I don't know. It's still on my shelf. So um, so I don't really... I, I just got the impression they were a bit sort of poison met, met Motley Crue or something. Yeah, something, yeah, something like that, for sure. What my memory, what my memory tells me, anyway. Yeah. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, there's certainly never been anything else after that. So, okay, and then uh, so Tony, what what sort of things are on the horizon right now? So you've got uh, TNT in the works. Do you have anything else going on, or any prospects for the future? Yes, I'm on, um, I've just started working um, on a metal musical that's been recorded in Trondheim, which is sort of uh, the second biggest city further up in Norway. Um, I've got to do five tracks on that, which is going on the stage, but I don't think I'll be performing it on the stage i'm just doing it um with gore and edmund oh okay um, yep the uh uh Ingve, right or used to be in Ingve, yeah yeah he's he, he's one of the other vocalists on it so there's me gore and edmund and um uh i'm not sure there's a maybe the guy out of halloween is involved i can't remember but there's a um a string of famous names and and i've got a that's that's pretty much going on through this year that is so it's basically a metal musical which is a tragedy story 
Um, so I'm, I'm helping co-write that. I'm good at tragedies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've finished the uh, I've finished the uh, an album in Milan um, with a brilliant keyboard player called Douglas Docker, who again Gore and Edmund is on that album as well. Oh, there you go. And so so is John Payne from Asia. Oh, um, nice. And Greg Bisonetti is playing all the drums, uh, and it's been mixed by Simon Hanhart in London at the moment, which is like a it's like a Star Wars rock album. It's like a sci-fi prog rock album, but it's a lot like Yes. And um, he's written a, a massive record. It's called The Mystic Technocracy. And um, he's called the band uh, Docker's Guild. Oh, okay. Uh, it's a serious, a serious piece of work that is. I'm very proud to have... So I only sang on three songs on that, but it's, um, it's a fantastic record. Um, apart from that, I've been asked to go and run a rock school by the same guy in Milan as um, as a well, I don't know about a mentor I don't think that's the right word really but uh, somebody to, to, to can give the younger people some advice about what the business is like and, and show some examples and do some do some rock and roll teaching classes and things like that you know um, that's in the summer um, short of that no I'm not doing anything else <laughs> <laughs> that's enough yeah. sod it <laughs> yeah oh for sure won't. I'm getting divorced. There you go. Right. That's that's uh, that's taking up quite a bit of my time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I guess uh, I guess I shouldn't ask for a new Siam record in the process, eh? Oh, you know, I mean, I've I've been approached about this uh, quite a few times in the last ten years, and um, just the very uh, well, the possibility of putting any of those members of people back together is not a possibility at all. Yeah. And now I've left now I've left England altogether. It's um uh, yeah, it's uh, it's not going to happen. And I and I don't I don't really want to ruin what I remember either. Um we could easily write another album. There's no doubt about that because all the attitudes are probably just as evident in the musicians and what they would want to play and what I would want to write about. A, a new album would be very easy to write. But the people are the problem in that band. They are spread everywhere. Oh, I can imagine. Fifteen years later, right? I mean, the guitarist from the first, the guitarist from the first album, Chris Evans, he's now a professor of engineering, um, and um, <laughs> some other guy's a gas fitter, and the drummer <laughs> disappeared in London and never saw him again, and the bass player has got married to somebody else and has become a dad that he never wanted to be, and he's given up recording altogether. So, you know, I, I don't even want to go there, to be honest. I've got yeah. so much cut out with TNT, that, and, it, and it achieves what it sets out to achieve. Every time we go out, we come back, and we've achieved what we're meant to achieve. And I don't really see any point in veering from where I am at the moment to um, to prioritise another band. There's no point. Oh, yeah, for sure. I think it'll, pro it'll, it'll probably be the death of me, but I'm going to stick it out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Would you ever consider doing another record like uh, like Vital Designs or something in that sort of vein again? Or um, that would really just depend on time. Yeah. Um, because again, that was another record that came completely out of nowhere. It was just a demand from my publisher to to do a solo album while the profile was so high with TMT. So I said, okay, it sounds like good advice. I'll do it. And. Uh, the guy that I was going to co-write it with, which was, which was Neil Hibbs, who's a fantastic guitarist in Salisbury in England. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, he's, um, he's Ronnie Lefeco's mentor uh, when it comes to um, when it comes to um, actually writing down the music sc uh, music scores of everything that Ronnie has played. Ronnie plays it so fast he doesn't know what he's fucking done. <laughs> so, but, but, but Neil does, you see. So this is how we met on the tour bus and. Um, it was actually my wife's suggestion that I, I, I co-wrote an album with Neil, so I took her up on that one, and uh, and it worked great. And I think the album took about three months again, you know, um, from start to finish. And uh, we got all sorts of people involved. Um, Eric Ragno from LA on keyboards. Oh, from uh, Takara and China. Well, he's, wasn't he in China Blue? He, he's in a thousand bands. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, that's the guy. Okay, uh, lovely guy. And um, and also uh, some people from Shy, and I got Morty Black in on bass from TNT. And oh, there you go. When we came out to when we came out to play some shows, we brought Jeff Nichols from Black Sabbath to play keyboards with us. And oh, cool! You know, so um, a lot happened all of a sudden. Actually, um, 
but again, TNT, I only played in Norway. So again, TNT had to take the priority. So I had to drop it and, and run back with, and get on with what the work was with the band. So it was it was just um, something to do while I was kicking my heels, really. Yeah. So, um, you know, yes, there's a chance it could happen again, but um, I'd have to wait until um, we've actually... You know, we could be on the road two years with this album. I don't know. Yeah. It could be 18 months. And whatever happens, we'll have to wait until after that. So it's as simple as that. Yeah, fair enough, for sure. <laughs> yeah, every, everything you explain is just way too much stuff. Yeah, well, I mean, you've got to stay on top of it and try not to bloody burn yourself out at the same time, you know. Oh, yeah, for sure, man. Well, hey, Tony, thank you so much for uh, taking the time out to do this. Yeah, no sweat. Before I let you go, I'd just like to get you to pick a couple more tunes. Uh, could you pick two from State of Rock, since we talked about that? Well, the opening track was always my favourite, and that was Black and Blue. Okay. And um, <laughs> the other one that seemed to work really well was a song called Count Me Out. Yep. For so you just had that was the last thing I wrote on the record, and it's like that bloody works great. That does. Mm -hmm. and I, I don't know where it came from; it just happened. But I mean, when I listen to it, I, I really enjoy it. So yeah, them, them two tracks. Yeah. Okay, and how about uh, two from Siam? I can uh, without too much trouble. I would go straight to uh, interaction. Okay. And uh, depending on um, how long your show is. Um, New Age Warning. Cool. Yep, for sure. Which I've always loved as well. Okay, and uh, how about a couple from your solo works? You know, Vital Design and Cruiser and... Sure. Um, let's have a look. See what we got. Uh, well, Cruiser, straight away I'd choose um, Only Love Knows Why. Okay. And then uh, and you pick a tune of Vital Designs? Yep. Um, it would probably have to be Say It One More Time. Okay, great. All right, Tony, well, thanks again. Thank you so much for taking the time out to do this. You're welcome. Yep, take her easy. Take it easy, ta-da. Let's fire off uh, two from State of Rock right here. Here's Black and Blue. Black and Blue. 